Hey, beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to encourage you prophetically to make your future bigger than your past and your faith bigger than your fears. And how do we do that? We do that by what we speak and what we meditate on. First John 5 verse 4 says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Your faith can overcome whatever you've been through in your past. Your faith can overcome whatever fear you have right now. But what you have to do, your part in that is taking what is born of God, that thing that he's spoken to you, that prophetic word that he's given you, that he says war a good warfare with according to the prophecies, the word of promise about your future that has gone before you, those promises that you have found and laid hold of and those things that God has specific, specifically spoken over your life, that you take those and you begin to meditate on them and you begin to believe what God says about you. And when you begin to believe what God says about you, then it begins to starve your doubts and starve your fears. And you begin to see yourself as God sees you, able to be, do, and have everything that he has promised you, spoken over over your life purposed and planned for you and so when you do that and then you begin to speak because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so it's what you're meditating on that you will speak so he told Joshua be strong and courageous in Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse eight, he said, be strong and courageous and meditate on the word of God. Let me go there because this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to outlast your fear. You're gonna overcome your fears. And you know, the other way that you do it is through the love of God. God loves us through our fears and into freedom when we learn to cling to him and make his word bigger than our worries. Huh? That's another way to say it. We make our word, his word bigger than our worry, worries. And we become prayer warriors, warring a good warfare with the prophetic words that have been spoken over us and not worrying. Worrying prayers is praying the problem and not the promise. And so God wants you to begin to decree a thing and cause it to be established. When you decree a blessing, that's what is established. It is an edict. It is a, it is a law that you set in motion. That is a decree decree to establish something. That's why the word says decree a thing and it shall be established. So he wants you to begin to declare what he's spoken over you and then to decree what he says about you. That Take what he has already said yes to in heaven and begin to enforce it here on earth. And you do that with what you decree, what you say with your mouth, what you say, this is what I'm going to stand for. This is what I'm going to set in motion. This is what I want to establish in my life. I don't care what I've been through. I don't care what my past says. It doesn't dictate to me my present or my future. I can change where my future is going. I can't do anything about the past, but I can change my present at present and I can order my future. I can carve out a new path with the words that I speak. And the Lord gives us the, the way to do that here in Joshua verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. When you make your faith bigger than your fears and you begin to think upon that and meditate on what God says about you, then you make your way prosperous. When you stop looking back and you start looking forward and you make your pit, the, the picture of your future bigger than what is behind you, then you make your way prosperous. But again, John, 1 John chapter 5 says, what is born of God? And so what has God spoken to you? What has God said about you? What has God given you the legal right and authority to claim? What are the boundaries, lines that he has set for you? Psalm um, 16 says, 
The boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. I have a beautiful inheritance. And so there are certain things within the boundaries that God has ordained for you, his set place for you, which he has established boundaries for everyone under the sun. We find that in the New Testament. But these boundary lines, he says, have fallen, uh, Psalm 16, verse 6, the boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. I have a beautiful inheritance. And so God has an inheritance for you. And so whatever he has decreed for you, whatever is written in his book for you, whatever he has established in heaven that he wants to bring to earth for you, it's already been written. And so it's our job to find it out. It's our job to search out a matter. The king, the Lord can conceal a matter, but we search it out and we've been given his word. So it's not a lot of work. How much time are you spending in the word, meditating on it day and night? Like he told Joshua, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Success. And so, beloved, I want you to begin to break fear off of you by speaking what God says about you. You have no reason to have fear for your future. Proverbs 31 says, says she has no fear for her future because she has put her trust in the Lord. And so you do not have to fear your future. You can rejoice over your future and the things to come. You don't have to fear what is going to happen. You don't have to live with evil forebodings. You can make your faith bigger than your fears by the words that you speak and the things that you meditate on. The th and I think I went over this in prayer and I will link it today, but um, this this Saturday morning prayer, but James talks about the mouth and how the mouth is like a the tongue is like a rudder that steers ships. It's so small, but just like a ship that has a rudder that can turn it whatever whichever way it goes, whichever way it wants it to go, even though the ship is so powerful, that's what we do with our mouth. And so when you, and with the words that we speak and with our tongues, and so when you, beloved, get ready to speak something, think about what you're saying, think about what you're putting into the atmosphere. Think about if you are sowing into your fear or into your faith. Think about if you're giving something to the enemy to attach to because the Bible says that we're ensnared by the words of our mouth. So are you ensnaring yourself? Are you opening up a door for the enemy to come in? Or are you closing doors and speaking blessing in life and giving a door of access to uh, the angels of the Lord, which the Bible says, do his word. They work out his word. The, uh, um, the book of Psalms has a verse that says, the angels of the Lord do his word. In other words, they perform it for him. And so who are you who are you summonsing, summonsing with your words? And so this is what I want you to know that you can make it when you make your faith in God bigger than your fears of what could happen and your hope for the future bigger than your regret of the past and your shame and your pain and all the things that are connected, then you make your way prosperous and you will have good success when you look forward and stop looking back. Whatever that means for you, whatever God has for you, and maybe you don't know what he has for you. Maybe you're in a hopeless place right now or you you don't have a lot of hope because you can't see the future for looking at your past. But the, if you would just have the faith and the courage today to to turn away from looking at the past, looking at the regret, hoping over something that is that God is asking you to let go of, to lay down, to surrender to him, then he could show you what he has in front of you. But it's not until you're willing to lay it down. And whatever it is, if it's meant to come back together again, God will restore and reconcile whatever relationship, whatever situation needs to be reconciled in the future. 
But if you don't let go of it and you hold on to it, then you are not giving God the room to move in your life. You're not allowing him the space and the room to move in a new way in your life. And that's what God wants to do. But you have to change your vision and your perspective to look forward and not backwards. So I just want to pray for you today before you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sister and even my brother who may be watching this today. I pray that they would turn the direction of their eyes to look forward and not backward. I pray that fear would break off of them and faith would arise in them and they would begin to meditate on what you say about them which you have already spoken over them, they would begin to lean into you. And if they don't know to see what you have for their future, they would believe what you show them and not uh, tremble with doubt and fear, but in awe of what God wants to do in their lives. And then I pray that they will begin to believe it and meditate it until it becomes the thing that comes out of their mouths because it is in abundance in their heart, Father God, that you would bless them and that you would give them to see the hope in the future that you have for them and as they walk with you and agree with you and walk in um, your will for for them and come into um, agreement and harmony with what you have for them even if it means a time of surrender and waiting that you will begin to bless them and you will begin to prosper your word in their life father god and they would step into a season of be a flourishing and thriving and not just thr uh, surviving and striving but they would begin to serve uh, to thrive and bloom and flourish in this season so beloved i thank god for you may you prosper in this season. God bless you until next time. 